Hello, Westcon 2020. Welcome to the virtual world. We are here today to talk about the three C's of insurance. And my name is Deidre Hudson, and I'm with Avalon Risk Management in the San Francisco branch. I've been with Avalon for roughly 18 years, basically too many to count. What does my C have to do with insurance today? It is connection with an ATA carnet. What are, we're just gonna cover some of the basics and what you can use a carnet for. What are some of the benefits? How does a bond fit into it? And how to avoid potential penalties when it comes to ATA carnets. So what is a carnet? I'm sure most of you know already, it is basically a merchandise passport. It allows goods to export and import into foreign countries, as well as the United States of America, without having to pay duties and taxes that would be applicable for the merchandise entering the commerce. In the United States, the carnets are managed by the U.S. Council for International Business, and they have been handling that project since 1968. In the United States, we have two types of carnets, an ATA carnet and a Tecro carnet. Some statistics about carnets in the United States, there are more than 13 carnets issued per year, covering a value up to 1.5 billion. Carnets in a nutshell, are an international customs document that simplifies customs procedures for temporary importation of various goods. As I previously mentioned, it eliminates the need to pay duties and taxes, as well as it offers the most flexibility for importations or temporary importations, and it offers uniformity with the partner countries. So what can you use a carnet for? Industry and business items, such as commercial samples, professional equipment, trade show and exhibition displays, ordinary goods, such as computers and tools of the trade, as well as extraordinary goods, uh, gems, orchestras, bobsleds for the Olympics. It's important to also know what you cannot use a carnet for. It does not include consumable goods, disposable goods, or what I call tchotchkes for trade shows. Anything that will not return back into the United States can be listed and itemized on a carnet document. It's really important to remember that a carnet does not relieve the exporter of the obligation to comply with the United States export controls. Um, export licenses still must be obtained, so it's really important to be sure to check with your PGAs. So what are the benefits of using an ATA carnet? The largest thing that I hear from customers is that it saves time, effort, and money. It eliminates the value added tax, duties, and the posting of security that normally would be required at the time of importation into the foreign country. The cost of an ATA carnet is predetermined in US dollars and it may be used for unlimited entry and exit in the United States and to foreign and partner countries. It's valid for up to one year, and it's accepted at more than 95 countries and territories across the world. I always suggest that you look at the USCIB.org website to get a full list of the countries that accept carnets because they do change. One of the biggest topics that I touched on is simplifying customs procedures. Carnets allow for temporary exporter to use a single document 
for all the customs transactions, even if it's going to multiple countries, to facilitate the re-entry back into the United States, the ATA Carnet acts as the U.S. Customs document and serves as the registration of the goods as the entry document. It eliminates the need to register the goods with CBP at the time of departure. So you ask, what are some of the countries? And I'm sure most of you can't read this because I barely can't. Um, but most countries that you would think are a part of the Carney um, program are listed here. Sometimes um, there are several uh, um, Central American and um, South African countries that do not participate. So again, um, we remind you to either reach out um, to us to determine if it's a country or to check the USCIB website. So what are some of the Carnet basics? Carnets include several components. A typical shipment and return requires four sets of counterfoils, a general, a general list of the itemized goods that are going to be shipped on the Carnet, the green registration sheet, the yellow counterfoils, which is for the exiting and returning into the US, white counterfoils for importation and re-exportation to foreign countries, and blue transit counterfoils and vouchers when merchandise travels by land and passes through or stops in a separate country. Switzerland is a requirement of blue transit counterfoils. Um, if in the event you are halfway through your trip and you determine that you do need additional counterfoils to visit more, say, foreign countries, we can always supply those, and those, of course, are available. So what are some of the other basics of Carnets? The original Carnet and the goods need to travel together. Failure to do so can render the Carnet invalid. Carnet goods must not be split up and diversed dispersed, excuse me. There are occasions where you will bring a portion of the goods back at one time and then the balance of the goods later. Please call our office to discuss the specific handling requirement should you decide to do a split return. The standard processing on an ATA Carnet is 48 hours. Expedited service, of course, meaning 24 hours, is available upon request. One of the other things I wanted to touch base on that I did not go over clearly was what is the difference between an ATA and a Tecro Carnet? A Tecro Carnet basically allows you to enter into Taiwan. So if you had a shipment that was going to France and then to Taiwan, you would not only have to obtain an ATA Carnet, but you would also have to obtain a Tecro Carnet. Once the goods are back in the US, the Carnet, just like your own personal passport, needs to be surrendered and should be sent back to our office so that we can review it, get it closed out, and returned timely. Failure to comply with the Carnet import and export regulations may result in unnecessary costs, fines, and bond forfeiture. Ultimately, forfeiting the Carnet privileges with the CS USCIB. Remember, the Carnet holder is ultimately responsible for any claim. So, what are some of the bond basics? Each Carnet is required to be secured via a bond at 40% of the value of the goods. However, there are some exceptions to the rule. Road vehicles that go for exhibit require 100% security for corporations or 150% if they are actually owned by an individual. You can submit cash or refundable claim deposit. It may be necessary for 
the council to hold that security deposit until a claim is resolved, so we always recommend that you obtain a bond. Hence, the simplest way to provide the security required to obtain an ATA carnet or a TECRO carnet is via a bond. And basically, it's just a financial guarantee that the holder will pay the foreign country should the goods remain in the foreign country past the expiration date. So how do you avoid carnet claims? Make sure that the goods are re-exported in a timely manner. If the goods are sold or a permanent entry happens in a foreign country, that can be handled on a carnet as well. The carnet needs to be presented to the foreign customs and they will actually indicate on the carnet that they have been converted into home use. If carnet items are disposed of to avoid the costs of shipping, the carnet holder is still responsible to pay the duties and taxes in a foreign country. Goods lost, stolen, are also subject to the duties and taxes. Cargo insurance may provide reimbursement in the event of an insured loss. For more information on cargo insurance, of course, you can contact Carnets at AvalonRisk.com. Properly validate the Carnet counterfoils by customs when exiting and entering the U.S. and all foreign countries. Should you become aware of any possible situation where a Carnet was used improperly or the Carnet may be responsible Carnet holder may be responsible for paying the duties and taxes. We always suggest take action before the Carnet expires. So why Avalon? We act on behalf of the forwarder and the exporter. We are reviewing all documentation prior to the issuance of the actual original Carnet. Issuance of the Carnet ha actually happens in our San Francisco office. A scanned copy of the carnet is sent to you on the day of issuance, and we only require a POA from either a freight forwarder or the exporter once annually or biannually. We retain copies of all the closed carnets and can, can assist whenever a claim does incur, often engaging with the exporter if required. I just wanted to thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a great WestCon and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.